Bitcoin makes another new all-time high. That's right, guys. We just broke 93K USD. So you know what that means, right? You know what that means. And cue the FUD. The CEO of a small Canadian crypto exchange was just kidnapped. Or was this just a really clever marketing stunt? Welcome back, everyone. We are all on cloud nine. That's right. Price discovery territory. Absolutely beautiful place to be. Everybody that pretends that they know what Bitcoin's going to do is just clearly full of it. But it doesn't matter, right? It's not going to stop us from speculating and having fun. Um, but on a different note, right, on a different note, of course, we have these somber reminders of reality. And let's dive into this story. I actually think, though, this story is not so obvious. When I first dove into this story, it, it looked like the typical scenario, right? Uh, some person who was known to have crypto and or Bitcoin and some criminals decided to kidnap this person, hold them for ransom and steal their Bitcoin, right? The, the proverbial $5 wrench attack, it just, it doesn't seem like there's anything out of the ordinary on this one, right? But Let's go through the story because I'm not 100% sure. The CEO of Canadian cryptocurrency firm was kidnapped and held for a million dollar ransom in downtown Toronto during rush hour. He was released unharmed after a million dollar ransom was paid. And as we'll see later on, even that isn't accurate. What exactly happened here? According to police, the suspects forcibly took the victim, CEO of crypto exchange WonderFi, Dean Skirka, into a vehicle and demanded money for his release. The president and CEO of Toronto-based financial firm WonderFi was eventually found unharmed in Centennial Park in Etobicoke, Ontario. Now, in terms of the ransom payment, every single crypto news outlet OK, uh, because that that's really who's reporting on this. There isn't I didn't find uh, any sources from the trad fi media, so to speak. Right. There was nothing on Yahoo Finance. So this is where the details of the ransom payment get a little funky. Right. Because there's a different source, uh, which is interesting. It's another crypto outlet. And they're saying that it was reported that they paid uh, that. Sorry, that the CEO, Dean, paid $720,000 to secure his freedom. And there were, in every single article, there is mention that the company's funds were unaffected. And of course, the reason why this happened, right? This is always, th th this is always the most important thing. The reason why it likely has to do with the fact that the criminals thought that he had access to a lot of crypto, being the CEO of an exchange, and that Bitcoin had recently increased in value. So the, um, the correlation between Bitcoin's increase in value and the increase in these types of incidents is not unknown. We, we always see this. And if we don't dive into it a little deeper, then it always seems to be fairly accurate. This also I find a little bit strange, but that could just be me. Uh, in an email to CBC Toronto on Thursday, Skirka confirmed his involvement in the incident, but assured that he was safe. He emphasized that the safety and security of all WonderFi employees are of utmost importance and that client funds and data remain secure and unaffected by the incident. So again, this seems to be the, um, the PR messaging from WonderFi. Now, you know, whenever one of these incidents occurs, Jameson Lopp uh, is who is quote unquote, a security, uh, you know, like a security expert, so to speak. Uh, he writes a lot of um, a lot of material um, on security and um, specifically, specifically securing your identity uh, on the internet. Anyway, so Lop chimed in on this because he actually keeps a tally of all of these events. So he noted that the average cryptocurrency user, even early adopters who may be multimillionaires, often lack robust physical security and operational security or privacy measures. 
While this particular incident may not be a concern for most people, Lop emphasized that even high profile figures in the crypto space often don't have a level of security and privacy commensurate with their risk profile. So this whole entire thing looks like it's legitimate, right? And when I went through this story, I believed that it was legitimate initially as well. But then something kind of struck me as strange. When I went on Yahoo Finance, I went to go and look up the ticker for this company, right? The uh, the trading, the trading ticker, because this is a company that trades uh, over the counter in the US and it trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Now, there was no mention of this particular story anywhere. And the more I dug into it, the more I found only the local news, only local news in Toronto had picked it up. And uh, a lot of the, uh, the, the crypto, uh, the crypto media companies had picked it up. But it would seem that if the, if the CEO of an exchange was kidnapped, you'd think that that would end up in, in Yahoo Finance, right? Like, don't you think that that would be of some concern at the very least don't you think that shareholders would want to know that that the ceo got kidnapped and and held for ransom you could see here the company uh, essentially did a reverse split into a public company so this is what's also kind of interesting um this company wonderfy was d5 ventures before and d5 ventures uh was invested in by almeida research and for the people who don't know who almeida research is that was one of the many companies under the sam bankman freed um group of companies so that's interesting so they had that kind of rough patch right and then they did a reverse split a uh, 57 for 500 reverse split, right? So for every 500 shares, you got 57 of this, this wonder Fi exchange. Now, since they've did, since they've done this back in 2022, you could see here, according to the chart that this stock, um, has gone on to lose 89% of its value. And now here we are, right? Bitcoin, in price discovery, new all-time highs, this struggling exchange, they released their earnings two days before this event occurred. So I know it sounds completely crazy and outlandish, right? That a CEO would orchestrate their own kidnapping in order to pump the stock price. I know that that seems kind of nuts, Again, there's there's missing pieces. Supposedly, this CEO paid them with crypto, right? I, I, they didn't, it didn't specify what. So he didn't say what he paid them with. He didn't say whether it was Bitcoin and, and some other shit coins or something like that. It, it just says that it was digital payments. And for some reason, for some reason, Chainalysis isn't looking into this. Nobody is being asked to, to look into this. And there is a claim that because this was done digitally, that it's harder to track. Um, if you were the CEO of a crypto exchange, you should know that all of this is public information and that it's actually significantly easier to track funds on a blockchain. So I, I just feel like this is complete and utter BS. And my last point about it is this. Back in March, there was a company named Nalam Resources. Has nothing to do with WonderFi, okay? Has nothing to do with this exchange, has nothing to do with this guy's kidnapping. But what the company did do, this was a pump and dump, okay? And this was a penny stock that was struggling and they needed to raise, well, they wanted to raise their share price, okay? So what did they do? They put out a press release saying that they're gonna put Bitcoin on their balance sheet. And now take a look at the chart. Does that look familiar? It's a pump and dump. And look, ever since that news, it's been completely flat. So guys, I, uh, like I said, you know, normally I am the first one to report that, um, you know, people need to be safe. And of course, right. Me saying that this story isn't real in no way negates the fact that people need to take care of their personal safety, right? You don't need to go around and tell everyone how much money you have or, you know, flaunting all kinds of ridiculous cars and, 
and stuff like that. I mean, obviously to each their own, but if you're going to do that, you need to understand that there are people who see that, right? And of course, this is not what this CEO did, okay? It's not what this CEO did, but my point is this, right? This is a bull run. You're gonna have all this different type of stuff happening, okay? There's gonna be a whole bunch of noise. Um, but in this particular case, I do believe that this is actually, I, I, I'm not convinced that this story is indeed real. Um, I, I think that this was all staged in order to um, try to bring attention to a lackluster company with essentially lackluster earnings that nobody is really paying attention to. And so I believe that this was just a publicity stunt. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. Do you think this was a publicity stunt? Anyways, that's all I wanted to talk about, guys. I'll catch you tomorrow.